My wife had been cheating on me for over a year because she was depressed. Hey, throw away account, I'm going to try not to post too many identifiable details or ramble on for too long. About a month ago, I stumbled onto the fact that my wife has been cheating on me for at one 1.5 years. I'm early 30s M and she's late 20s F. We have three young kids youngest is three. Been trying to make this post for three plus weeks, just not sure where to start or what to share. I typed up a much longer post, but retyping to try and condense it. We haven't been sleeping in the same bed for two years. I don't think this really started due to fighting or anything. We had an extra bed and TV downstairs and it was pretty comfy to lay down there and watch TV after getting the kids to sleep. Sometimes I'd fall asleep down there. Then we got a new dog who quickly grew to 100 plus pounds and slept in bed with us. It became uncomfortable and I was waking up with back neck pain so I said I was going to sleep downstairs if the dog was going to keep sleeping in our bed. So I just ended up sleeping in the basement from then on. We've been together 11 years, married for 5. 3 or so years ago, I was very burned out from work, wife made me see a therapist and I was given depression medicine. It helped for a while, but over the past 2 years, my fatigue has gotten worse and worse. I've recently found out my testosterone is low and I'm doing a sleep study soon too. I've got so many ambitions and plans but walking around feeling like I have weights on my eyelids all the time makes it difficult to focus and get things done. Adderall keeps me going most of the time. Our relationship seems more like roommates now. I've still always loved her and been attracted to her, try to show her affection, but she hasn't shown much back in a long time. I'm not sure that we've had intercourse in the past year, maybe two four times in the past two years. I think due to the low testosterone and everything, I've had so much brain fog, it's been hard to remember smaller things like that. I really hoped once I got this fatigue stuff figured out, we'd work hard on rebuilding our relationship. Anyways, wife worked up until we had kids. She has an ex-coworker friend I'll call her Tracy that moved away for a few years but moved back to a town an hour away. Recently one weekend pretty abruptly she said her friend was going to be in town, and instead of going home. They wanted to get a hotel to hang out and get sleep away from the kids, then they'd go hiking the next morning. I never tell her no, but thought it was a bit abrupt. Wife said Tracy was paying for most of the hotel stay so my wife booked it. A few days later I had looked at the credit card for something else and saw the hotel stay was pretty expensive. My wife had Venmoed me money from Tracy that covered pretty much all of it. Tracy sent it to her, wife sent it to me because my Venmo is connected to her bank accounts. Going to try to summarize the rest because I'm starting to ramble again. Looked for the Roku eyeliner off MTV for hotel. Found it in her suitcase, noticed a USB charger that looked like some kind of magnet one for intercourse toy. I don't ever snoop around because there's always been complete trust between us. I also don't care if my partner has toys, or looks at porn. I pretty much got her to open up and try some toys in the beginning of our relationship. Thought it was kinda kinky at first that she'd bring something like that with her, then realized it was kinda weird. Looked around, found box for a love and Bluetooth toy right in her nightstand I wasn't aware we had. They're kinda pricey and we're in a lot of debt, they also seem to mainly be for having someone control it over the internet. Looked back at credit cards, couldn't figure out when or how she had bought it. Checked her laptop that night she doesn't really use it but her email was signed in. Immediately saw receipts on Venmo from a guy whose name I recognized sending her the amounts she had just sent me from Tracy. Looking further, I see lots of other times this guy had sent her money saying things like you're the best and food emojis, so I assume they went out to eat quite a few times. I had no idea any of this was going on. We can track each other on our phones, although hers seems to sometimes not update correctly a majority of the time. I really think it does have issues, but she could also have been using that as an excuse to turn off her location. I hardly check where she is anyways. I took pictures of all of this, but also found that the girls weekend trip she took with Tracy and a few other friends may have just been them too. She had created an itinerary for the weekend she even showed me it. In her send email she sent that guy the itinerary with a heart kiss emoji. Last year I took a trip for 4 days to meet some internet friends. I was surprised she was okay and encouraged me to go, saying it could be good for my mental health to get away. In her email, a month before I left, she had sent a calendar type event to that guy for the Saturday I was out of town saying date night. Uck there may have been another time she went and did something for a night with Tracy but I can't remember. It's also hard to easily go back that far in texts on my iPhone to see what was going on that day. Not sure if it's easier on a Mac PC? I tried to check her Facebook Messenger as it was signed in, but it had a pin set up and said it was sending something to her phone. I quickly deleted the history and put the laptop back where it was she was asleep. I checked a couple days later and her email Facebook were signed out, not sure if she suspected me of doing something or not. 
Also looked around in our closet, found some mementos? WTF hidden, like a hand-drawn Mother's Day card from this guy saying she's such a great mother to her kids, some receipts from when they went to eat? Part of a shipping label that looks like he might bought her flowers at some point, and a Plan B pillbox. I thought it was unused, but I checked again another day and it was used. I looked at our Target app and could see she bought it months before my trip last year, so this post is getting longer than I wanted again, but the point is she's been lying for a long time. I didn't see any texts or anything between her and this guy but what other conclusion can you come to? Like her knee was hurt after that hiking they did. Did they go hiking? I have no idea what's true anymore. Before anyone asks, I'm sure my kids are mine, we were actively trying at the time and they look like me. I still love her care about her but I'm totally disgusted and don't see any way our relationship can come back from this. She knows I never wanted to put my kids through a divorce as I went through a terrible one with my parents. I have learned over the years though that staying together for the kids isn't good either for the kids to have two miserable parents. Childbirth is a scary thing, with that and other things, we've been through so much together, I still can't believe it's gone this way. She was very angry at a family member for cheating on their significant other years back too. Since I found all this out, I've tried doing some more investigating, not that it matters. My state is an on-fault state, and I really have no intention of trying to screw her over on anything anyway. I'm just done and it seems as though she has been for a long time too. I've also not touched her or shown any affection since I found out. It's honestly hard for me to look her in the eye, I just try to avoid her as I figure out what to do. Obviously when it comes to the kids I'm not going to ignore her. She's a great mother, but she's still acting completely normal, trying to plan projects for us to get done and mention future family vacations. I'm trying to act as normal as I can but it's getting harder and harder. I just feel extremely broken inside and lonely. I don't feel like I can tell any close friends or family members, I don't know that I can trust them not to gossip or act differently once they know what's happened. I've spoken to a few online friends, they feel bad for me but none of them are married so they don't really have any advice. I've told a few trustworthy friends who are ex-co-workers, but not close enough to know my inner circle of friends family. On top of being exhausted all the time, having the energy to deal with this seems impossible. I know once I confront her and rock the boat, there's no going back. My kids' lives will change forever. I mean what's the best case scenario here? I'd be happy if I could keep the house, some of my stuff from before the marriage, co-parent and her move out. We're in a lot of debt, like a lot. I should have worked harder to take control of our finances. Do I suggest that I keep the house, take on all the debt, and she can walk away debt-free, with our nicer car that's paid for and possibly a little money I'd probably have to borrow money from a family member if that's the case? We really don't even have money for lawyers to get divorced. I'm hoping we can work with a mediator to work this out. Also with not having any money saved for something like this, it looks like doing a legal separation we could figure out details of the divorce and she could keep her insurance through me until she got a job again. Maybe I'm just in dreamland over here. Oh also she's know this guy since middle high school. They may have briefly dated or messed around in high school but kept in contact all these years. Not sure what caused all of this to happen. Maybe I could have been a better husband, but I know I shouldn't feel like it's my fault I don't. Uck sorry this is so long. Thank you if you read this and have any advice. I guess I'll talk to the therapist I deal with for the depression and one of the friends I spoke to gave me the name of a lawyer who is supposedly a real good mediator. Update 1 thanks for the replies so far. I'll respond more soon. I have this account and evidence set up on a virtual machine and I'm not home at the moment so I'm remoting into it from my phone. Yes this is real. No I don't want to stay with my wife. My parents went through a very nasty divorce that lasted years. I'm trying to avoid putting my kids through the same thing so I want to make sure I'm prepared. I'm not going to lie I'm a very bad procrastinator and prone to shutting down in a stressful situation like this. The chronic fatigue and three little ones needing attention doesn't really help either. I should be home soon to respond to people more directly. Update 2 past week has been kinda shitty. Bad allergies, congestion. Still feeling like I'm stuck in the movie Groundhog Day, same shit every day. Our water heater had been leaking a little out the bottom. Then it started leaking a ton out the top so I had to shut it down. Pain in the back not being able to take normal showers go to in-laws for a shower, especially for the kids. Some other annoyance is going on too but since Friday, I've been dealing with headaches migraine so I haven't taken any Adderall. Not taking Adderall really makes me feel even more useless. I did go to urgent care today Sunday and found out I have an ear infection and sinus infection so got some more meds. I had planned on updating a thread to say yesterday Saturday I tried to rest for a few minutes and got berated by my wife as usual. Called named like ducking trash, bane of her existence, useless, 
etc. Usually in these fights I just shut down or ask why she's yelling at me. I know arguing won't solve anything and I don't want to fight when the kids could possibly hear. So last night sat. She's got an older iPhone of hers she's been messing with. I've looked at it a few times because my fingerprint still works from years ago, not that the password 123456 was hard to try, but nothing had been updated on it. I think she might have wanted to get it going again as a backup in case she needed to put YouTube kids on for our child that is autistic. She mentioned how it was too old to do too many apps on it yesterday I think, so I took another look last night and it appeared she fully logged into it so it was trying to sync up tons of shit. Decided to check again in the morning when she made a couple of runs I already can't remember what for, my memory is so bad duck. Oh also yesterday she said she was running to the weed store with one of her girlfriends. I'd looks like they did but long story short I checked her friend's snapchat story and around the time my wife got back, her friend had put a snap on her story about being at work. So looks like wife was lying about who she went with again yesterday. Today Sunday. I checked the phone again to see it more updated. It didn't look like texts were syncing up, but photos were. I'm pretty sure from what I've seen investigating, she uses some app to hide private type photos. Anyways, I checked the regular hidden photos and it's like 8 pics of this dude and his funny looking pee pee. A short video of him undressing, a screenshot of a snapshot showing boner in his pants telling her hess hard thinking about her. Checked recently deleted and see pic of her sucking his pee pee, and a few others of her boobs mirror pics. Already cranky from not taking a shower and all the head congestion, this just made me livid, but I was trying to take pics from my phone as evidence and make sure my kids ate breakfast while wife was out for a few. Also there were a couple of pics of them together on whatever trip she was supposed to have been taking with her friends, so yeah that just extra confirms all the lying. I tried laying down in our master bed after that because my head and ear were hurting. She came in after a while to yell at me. She had mentioned seeing a therapist this past Thursday something through our insurance she was able to do I guess. I think yesterday I had asked her how it went and she said they gave her depression medicine. So she comes in and is nagging me while I was laying down, and I'm going to miss a lot of details, but she basically said that the therapist was really worried about her because she is super depressed, unhappy with her marriage and having suicidal thoughts. I dunno I guess because I was pissed off already I decided to get up and go downstairs to my bed. She said something about me being a bad husband as I made my way out because she had just told me about having suicidal thoughts. Update 3 Some replies would probably help my mental state help me make sense of things. Since our hot water heater is still broke, she is going to her parents to take one and I believe tell them about the divorce. I told her yesterday she should tell them why we are getting divorced. Not sure if she will or not. I texted my immediate family to just say I told her I want a divorce. I haven't told them why yet. They all said they were there to support me, brother invited me over for dinner but not sure how I will even do that. I usually feel trapped here as we have three toddlers young kids to get fed into bed. My wife usually complains if I am not helping enough with that. Working from home today, so I'm trying to focus on that but not sure how much I'll be able to get done. Wife asked for the names of the two mediators I found. I kind of feel like I'm going to get screwed. I know we're married and she's entitled to half, but it just really feels shitty that she had an affair for two years behind my back and now probably expects half of everything. Last night she did say I could keep the house but that she wasn't budging on child support. Of course I would do whatever to support my kids, but I had mentioned to her it might be fair if I take on all the debt in lieu of her getting child support taken out of my paychecks. I don't know what's fair and what I can do to make sure my kids are in a good spot. At least last night she seemed insistent on moving into her own place and not her parents. Not sure if what today will bring, I know that as my parents divorce went on, my mom had people telling her to demand more and more and it spiraled into a nasty divorce. Will I get screwed by a mediator? Should I try to work out terms with her without a mediator? I laid downstairs for 20 minutes before she came down and said she can't do this anymore and doesn't know what to do and maybe we should try a trial separation. Saying maybe we could take turns staying at the house 3 days at a time or something with the kids. I had enough of the BS and told her she should just pack her shit and leave. She said if she leaves she's not coming back like she'd kill herself. Probably not the best response but I just kinda said okay which made her choke up and she asked if I was going to take care of the kids and I said yes. She started giving me more shit so I said I know she's been cheating on me for two years and the marriage is over and it's her fault. Out of nowhere now she starts claiming we've been separated for two years. I told her no we haven't and mentioned again she's been lying and cheating for two years and I can't trust her anymore. She never really acknowledged what I said but said we've been separated for two years and it's my fault, and when was the last time that we've had intercourse? Up until a month ago I'd been trying all the time and always got told no. 
She said she doesn't want to get screwed over and that the house will probably get sold and I'd probably be paying her child support and stuff since I'd been the breadwinner. At some point I mentioned she could take the car and her dog and have the kids 50-50 and I'd take all the debt. She mentioned lawyers and I told her I didn't want to screw her over and that we should try to talk to a mediator before wasting money on lawyers. If we sell the house, after paying all the debt off there probably won't be any money left over and the kids won't have the house anymore. Yeah I'd after this I mentioned that it was her fault and that she should tell her parents and everyone why the marriage failed. She said she wasn't going to let me drag her name through the mud. Not really my intention but I mean it's the truth. She's been having an affair for at least two years and lying about it. She also said if I gave her money for a trailer or something she could move out if I supported her while she went to school found a job. She mentioned finding a therapist for the kids. Hadn't really planned on confronting her today. Been figuring out a new water heater and haven't spoken to any lawyers or anything yet. After all that, later she wanted to talk in a room away from the kids again. She said we could go talk to a counselor tomorrow about our separation. She said she doesn't know what to do and doesn't know how to fix this. I told her no, there is no fixing this and I'm done, it's not my fault the marriage failed. She said she feels horrible and hates herself. She kept blaming it on depression and was saying again how we've been separated for two years. I keep telling her no WTF we haven't been separated and she should have though about this two years ago before she ruined our marriage and everything for the kids. She mentioned how she kids had almost died giving birth for some reason and I was like yeah, we've been through a lot together, I can't believe you would do this. She also mentioned that it could be bad for our autistic child to divorce not sure, I had wondered about this too. I told her she should have thought about that before she lied and cheated. She said I could go find someone else and we could be in a loveless marriage. I was like WTF no, I am not going to do that. Again a little bit later she mentioned we have an appointment to talk to a counselor tomorrow at 10 am. I told her I don't care and am not going to talk to a counselor. She said it would be so we could figure out how to tell the kids. Yeah I'd I don't feel like to talking to a marriage counselor. I thought that would be the end of but I haven't been able to finish typing this up. She's seen me a few times on my laptop as I'm trying to type this and asked what I was doing. I guess she thinks I'm up to something. I'm not really sure what to say, she said she'll tell her family tomorrow. I keep telling her to tell them why. She said she would tell her parents why. She keeps insisting I don't tell my family the why because she's afraid they'll gossip in front of the kids. My mom does gossip and stuff sometimes, sure. She did eventually say sure she deserves it but to not tell them the why because she's so afraid of the kids finding out. I'm bad at explaining convos I've had. Later she said we should sell the house since I'd have to buy her out of her half to keep it. I told her she should let me keep the house since she wrecked the marriage. She seemed to say okay to that at one point. I don't know things seem different every time she comes to talk to me. Now she said she's going to look at a couple apartments tomorrow but that I'd have to co-sign since she doesn't have any income. I told her her parents could and that she should just move back in with her parents while she finds a job. She also came to talk to me most recently and said I can keep the house and everything but that she is going to get child support and that that could be a lot. She even mentioned maybe she could get the max child support since it's pre-tax and give me back some. WTF. I've never said I wouldn't support the kids or anything. I know someone asked at one point about the house. All the equity in it is mine from selling my first house and buying this one. Then we got married. The last time I refinanced I did get her name on it, not that any of that really matters. We're married so she automatically gets half and she birthed three kids so I can't exactly say she deserves nothing. If I said any of that out loud it would just make me look like an asshole saying she doesn't get half the house. So that's where I'm at now. I don't know how to proceed so I don't duck myself over. Should I try to get her to move out? Don't know how I'm going to pay for that really. I think she needs to try to move back in with her parents. House is probably worth 5550k, oh about 290k on it, probably in another 170k debt that has been racked up. Anyway to edit my post when I do these updates and not have it try to delete everything that was already there.